Hello, and welcome to lesson two on unlearning bad teachings. Uh, this week's lesson is titled, When Did Jesus Become White? And When Did Jesus Stop Being Jewish? Uh, and I have a few disclaimers to start off. I mean, I shouldn't, but uh, I, I, I should, uh, I'm going to have to for this one. Because when I taught this lesson originally, I taught it to a camp setting, as I said, in Pinecrest. And um, this was part of a larger topic. So there were actually three topics in one setting that I kind of bounced between uh, throughout the whole thing. And so I'm going to focus on just the one single topic. Uh, so it's going to be a more condensed version of what I taught to Pinecrest, where the other two topics that followed along with this one is... Uh, how was the Bible used to promote slavery, and how was uh, anti-Semitism part of the Christian movements? Because they all kind of weave together uh, with this particular topic. The other thing that I want to note is there are tons and tons of books on this, and I'm trying to condense it all into an under 20-minute video or so, and trying to take about 1,500 years of history. So this is not meant to be a comprehensive study on uh, when did Jesus become white and not Jewish anymore, uh, but just a very short summary to kind of give you a, a taste of what's out there. There's a lot more study on this and a lot more uh, complex discussion about this. But I wanted you to get a real sense that uh, we know that Jesus' image has transformed throughout history, and because of that transformation of Jesus' imagery, other things happened. Kind of like the previous video where I talked about exegesis and eisegesis and how this will lead to changes within uh, certain ways that we do government and ways that we translate the Bible and even the beginnings of whole uh, denominations within Christianity. A similar thing is happening here. Because of the way Im the image of Jesus was portrayed, whiteness takes control of Christianity and transformation happens. But we'll get into that a little bit uh, in other videos in a little bit soon. But if you were growing up in a predominantly white congregation and the congregation was around through the 1950s, 1960s, and beyond, you probably have in your congregation one of these pictures. These pictures that you're seeing now are from the 1940s to 1950s. A man named Selman uh, created them. They were mass-produced and sent to congregations, or I should say bought by congregations. They were popular during the 1950s in particular. And these Selman paintings are what most churches have as their image of Jesus. Either they have the profile, or they have the Garden of Gethsemane, or they have both, and uh, other images, or Jesus knocking at the door was a big one. But these images come from an American uh, salesperson who created this in a mass market and sold them to congregations, and they were like wildfire. But if you ask most people who attended church 1950s and on, what does Jesus look like? More than likely, one of these Selman paintings comes to mind when they're thinking about what Jesus looks like. If you notice, he's kind of got sandy brownish hair, blondish, blue eyes, and kind of striking. The skin is white. He is, or Caucasian, I should say, not even just white, white, uh, but kind of Caucasian rather than who Jesus probably was. This is the difficulty. Coming back. Uh, Jesus never had his portrait painted Jesus never had his picture taken because there was no such thing as pictures. So we don't actually know what Jesus looked like. We only have images that uh, come much later after his death and from different places. But from the Bible, we know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He lived in, uh, went to Egypt for a little while. Uh, 
ministered around Jerusalem and around the surrounding areas of what would be, you know, current uh, 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 Jerusalem and current uh, Palestine. And so we have Jesus walking in this area and know that he probably looked like a man from that time period. And so he probably had uh, what we might call Middle Eastern skin or olive skin and uh, was Jewish. These were facts from the Bible that we have. He was born in the Middle East. He was a Jewish man. And uh, so his complexion probably resembled that of a Jewish man born in the Middle East uh, in, uh, you know, it, it, and lived there for 33 years or so. And so we have a complex problem in that because there was no image of Jesus, people kind of started creating Jesus in their own image. At the beginning of Christianity, we can trace uh, Christianity's movement in kind of three major directions. The first is towards India, where we have uh, Thomas, the apostle, more than likely going towards India and uh, teaching there. We often don't think of India as a, as a Christian area, but India has millions and millions of Christians. It happens to be the third largest in India, but because there are so many people uh, there, a million plus people doesn't make a, a big movement there. The second place that it kind of goes, though, is to Ethiopia. One thinks that kind of Mary Magdalene, or no, I'm sorry, Mary, mother of Jesus, starts heading towards Ethiopia with some of the disciples. As we have in Acts, we have the description of the eunuch uh, bringing the gospel, in, or bringing Isaiah text, I should say, because the gospels aren't written, sorry, uh, Isaiah text and the story of Jesus into Ethiopia. And so uh, it, it, Christianity also starts moving that way, but also majorly towards Rome. Uh, this is where Christianity is going to really blossom from this time period on. Uh, it's going to come from Rome and stem out from that area. One of the things that we also have to keep in mind is as we read the Bible, the way started and became Christianity later, but it was not a big movement. Uh, we have to always kind of keep that in mind since our Bible is so focused on Judaism and then Christianity. Uh, we think it was this giant movement, but it was pretty small until about the 300s and on uh, when Constantine becomes emperor. That's when Christianity is really going to spread into the millions and millions of people. But before that, it's only maybe 100,000 in the 200s or something along those lines. And so it's not a giant movement. We have to always kind of keep that in mind as we're there. But once Rome declares itself a Christian nation and uh, Constantine makes everybody convert to Christianity, that's when it's going to really, really take off. And so... A lot of the artwork that we have because of Constantine and because of the movement into Europe, uh, a lot of the image and the icons that we have of Jesus are found in the Roman catacombs. Uh, these were areas where people were buried, but also artwork is displayed. So one of the earliest images that we have uh, is called Jesus the Good Shepherd, and it comes from the third century. What you could already notice as you look at this picture is Jesus is wearing Roman clothing. His skin is fairly light at this point, but he also has no beard. And so the no beard means no Jewishness. What wound up happening is Christians and uh, Jewish people start to split. So Christianity started as a Jewish movement. Uh, as persecutions happen, there are two groups that really persecute Christians at the time, and it's the Romans but also the Jewish people. And there's a complex reason for that involving uh, an agreement along with Rome. You can see parts of the worry of the split in the, in the letter to the Galatians of uh, Paul is really trying to start a rebellion against Rome using uh, the, this new Christian movement as a way to uh, stand up to Caesar. Uh, again, there's books and books written on this, and I'm trying to summarize it in about two minutes, but Christianity and Judaism split. So there's this desire 
to kind of go against its own roots. So the Christian nature starts to go against the Jewish roots. We'll get into that heavily into a, into a later video. And you could already start seeing that within the Gospels. Um, the fear of the Jews, for example, it becomes a big statement in the Gospel of John. Um, but uh, we have here in this picture, Jesus the Good Shepherd, from the third century again, uh, Jesus without a beard. So the desire to separate away from Judaism was already happening at this time. And so uh, we start to see images of Jesus without a beard. Another interesting, uh, as I was exploring, one, another interesting image is Jesus carrying a goat. And this is from the third or fourth century. I'm showing you this because uh, not only is there not a beard present and Roman clothing are there, and he has a Roman haircut, if you notice, as well, but Jesus is carrying a goat, not a sheep. One of the things that we also have to keep in mind is that the cross is not a predominant image within the Christian movement at this time. We know that ichthys fish uh, is, is a big symbol, but also... Uh, goats and vines. Goats in particular were a symbol of Christianity. The fact that Jesus is carrying a goat meant that those that were welcomed into the kingdom were the sinners, and those that the and and that was kind of the movement of Christianity. It was a more universal, everybody kind of comes in type movement, and it'll become more restrictive later uh, in the in the movement of Christianity. And that's important because uh, one of the people that are being kept out of the movement are brown and darker skinned people as whiteness takes over. So as we kind of continue along our art journey, we come to the fourth century. This is also found in the Roman catacombs. And this is Jesus with Peter and Paul. If you notice the skin color is slightly dark and he's got a beard again. So this idea of Jesus is Jewish and might be darker skin starts to show itself. So there was this kind of, what does Jesus look like? We know he's born in Bethlehem, we know this. So let's make him slightly darker. Um, this is going to disappear though altogether as we continue to move on. Uh, this is the next uh, oldest image that we have of Jesus from the 6th uh, or 7th century. Uh, it's Jesus as God and man. If you notice, Jesus is fully white here. Uh, the eyes have also sort of changed. It, yes, it's meant to look like two different halves of some, one person because the uh, idea of Jesus as God and man is there. So both halves are representing one part uh, of each. And so you see that Jesus is fully contained in that. But if you notice, his skin is white. Um, so the transformation to whiteness has really taken hold at this time. And it's, it's just going to continue on from that. What was winding up happening was uh, artists were using local models to be their, their images of Jesus. And so by the time we come to uh, the 1500s, if you notice in this picture, Jesus and the Holy Family with the visitation of the three kings, you'll notice everybody is white here except for one king, right? So the the Jewishness of, uh, is completely gone within Joseph, within Jesus. Uh, the idea of visitors from afar, except for the man with the darker skin, the other two visitors who are supposed to be kind of from Asia and India or China-ish and India, um, have become completely white at this time. In fact, a lot of nativity scenes have uh, pretty similar motifs where they'll have two white uh, uh, wise individuals and one darker skinned one. Uh, but the idea is we've moved all the way from whiteness of Jesus and Jewishness of Jesus have by the 1500s completely disappeared at this time. Uh, in fact, here's another one from Italy, where, as you can see, uh, Mary is there with the angels, 
and look at Jesus's beautiful blonde hair as we, as we have the transformation of who Jesus is. So within the European structure, Jesus becomes white. He stops being Jewish. He uh, transforms altogether as there is also kind of Jewish uh, hate, uh, hatred towards the Jewish people starts to take hold in Europe. And as uh, Jewish people get expelled from uh, countries and uh, out of areas, um, we see this kind of wanting to eliminate uh, Jesus as a Jewish man altogether. That starts way early. Uh, but also we see that uh, we want the Europeans wanted Jesus in their own image, and so Jesus becomes white rather than Middle Eastern. And so we see this complete transformation pretty early in the Christian movement, except, as I said, there's two other movements happening. There is also a movement happening in Ethiopia, as I said. And so we see different images, particularly of Mary, um, and these what's called nicknamed Black Madonnas. They show up around the 500s to 1500s, and they not only show up out of Ethiopia, but in Poland, in France, in different areas. So the idea was, as, as the Christian movement moves into Ethiopia, what winds up happening is it spreads up into different parts. So the, the Roman uh, area uh, kind of stays where it is and then goes into Germany and uh, into there. But the Ethiopian movement moves towards different areas. And so these black Madonnas show up. And there's a great book uh, about all of these. Uh, if you want to uh, read up on it, there there's... Um, uh, a whole nother book. <laughs> As I said, books and books are written on each of these topics about a woman's search for all the black Madonnas. Uh, but as you can see, uh, Mary is dark-skinned, Jesus is dark-skinned, and so the image of Jesus as an Ethiopian also is taking shape at this time, as well as Mary uh, as an Ethiopian is taking shape. Um, and so, so these Black Madonnas go out through all of Europe, and so we get two really contrasting images of Jesus, one that's darker skin, and one that is white and usually blondish hair. And the one that has taken hold of America in particular is the white blondish hair Jesus. Um, and somehow Jesus also started speaking English along the way, but that's a whole nother topic that I'm not even going to get into. Uh, but uh, the question becomes, what did Jesus look like? Recently, with AI technology, uh, we have images of what a typical Middle Eastern man living uh, between, you know, uh, 33 AD and earlier. This is some of the images that AI has created of what the possibility of a Jewish Middle Eastern man looked like uh, in that time period. And when I showed the first image to people, they said, oh, that's, that can't be Jesus. That can't be Jesus at all. But more than likely, he looked similar to one of these two pictures. And not the Selman picture. And not a white guy. And he was definitely Jewish. And so one of the things that winds up happening is because whiteness becomes the image of Jesus, whiteness it becomes the movement of Christianity as well. And when it starts coming to America, whiteness is going to take over uh, as a dominant area within Christianity, especially as we move into America, so that anybody who's not white and is darker is not seen as pure or good. This will bleed into our next topic, uh, which will be next week. How did the Bible support slavery? And so just keep in mind that as whiteness took over within Europe and the image of Jesus and even God becomes white, anything not white becomes bad and becomes evil. You even start to see this in some of the contrast uh, within Advent of darkness and light, or even within, uh, 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 I should say, uh, the contrast within the uh, 
discussions in uh, the American church of darkness and light and uh, the alb becomes whiteness. If you notice, I do not wear an alb. I tend to wear a cassock, showing that darkness is just as good as lightness. But this is what's gonna happen, is darkness is gonna symbolize bad, whiteness is gonna symbolize purity, and some of this stems from the image of Jesus as the white man who isn't Jewish. And so we'll get into this a little bit more next week, but as you can see, within the Christian movement, especially in Europe, Jesus stopped being Jewish and became white pretty quickly. Thanks for uh, watching this video. As I said, I'm always going to try to keep this within 20 minutes. So I went over a little bit of 20 minutes. And uh, if you want to read up more on these topics, there are tons of books out there about this, 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 uh, this topic in particular. Hope you have a great day. Take care.